Hello, this is Blocky, and this is how to use a Synchronex Part 2. Okay, basically, this is the menu editor. Um, there are three tabs on the button, and two on the right corner. We're gonna first look into these three menus at the button. Okay, so basically, the first tab is called Menus, and it's already opened by default. And here you can actually add or delete menus. And here you will have a list of the menus that are currently in your project. Uh, this is a new project, so I don't have any menu yet. Um, I need to make uh, first a warning. If you want the game to work, you need to have at least one menu called Warning or Main. And you can have both of that. Simply, I'm gonna show you how to actually have, you know, with this tutorial, both Warning and Main. And the engine will not automatically create those two menus for you. You need to create them yourself. And it's mandatory because otherwise the game won't run so first i'm gonna add a new menu and then call it um, i'm gonna call it warning um okay so basically i'm gonna show you uh, in this tutorial both menus so to integrate them so you have like the warning screen and the sort of main menu screen okay so basically i'm gonna do the warning first I'm gonna edit the warning menu first, so let's go to the properties tab. Here you will be able to change the background image of the menu, change or set the background audio of the menu, and you can even check the static effect if you want, um, you know, a static effect on the screen, and the areas of the buttons, I will show you later what are those. And there is a third tab called scripting. This tab is mainly the core of the menus. This is a part that you can edit and basically, you know, add events and code the menus to actually make them working. And yeah, we're gonna, I'm gonna show you later how to script the transition from the warning menu to the main one. And I'm gonna show you how to script some buttons so you can actually have an idea on how, how to use this tab. Let's move to the right corner where we have um element tab which is basically an add element tab with all the things that you can actually add into your menus and there is the second tab called view now view is an important tab because you can actually uh, preview how the menu will look into the runtime okay so first of all and i'm gonna add a string um this is the string that the engine created i can move it the very one i'm gonna place it in the middle and if you go to the properties tab, I will have all the properties of the text. Um, I'm gonna set it to this. And as you can see, as soon as I change the text, even the text on the big black screen actually changed. I can move this whenever I want. Um, I will put it like right here. And yes, this is the basic warning menu that I just made. So um, let's go to the main one. Here we'll actually um, put a string and I'm gonna edit the string and put um, five nights at example. Uh, as you can see, text changed. I can move it whatever I want. I'm gonna put that right here. Um, Let's import a button right here. I can click it and change the text of the button. I will um, call it new game. And I will create another button called um, continue. Just like that. I'm gonna put the I'm gonna put these two buttons right here. And they're gonna change the background image of this menu because I don't want it to look this bad. So I'm gonna click here. So I'm gonna click right here on background image. It will automatically ask you to select a PNG file. I'm gonna uh, search for my main menu one. Here it is. Um, as you can see, as soon as I selected it, it automatically um, set it as the background image. I will also put a background audio, and this time the game will. This time the engine will ask you to select a 
.mp3 or .ogg or .wav audio. I'm gonna uh, select here my beautiful um, music box audio. Okay, so now basically I, I just showed you how to set both background image and background audio. Um, yeah, still, I, we need to code the menus um, because the engine does not automatically go uh, from one menu to another. We need to create those transitions. So how do we make them? Uh, it's quite simple. We actually need to script that. So I'm currently on the warning menu. Since I have both warning and main menu, the engine will automatically start by going on the warning menu. So, so I need to make the transition from the warning menu to the main one. How do I do it? So as you can see, as soon as you go in scripting mode or in the scripting tab, I like to call it scripting mode sometimes, um, you will see that you will have the ability to add an event. If I click on this, it will pop up a menu uh, that will actually uh, tell you what the engine can actually do. I'm gonna go and put in a timer equals. Okay, so basically, um, it weighs um, a certain amount of text and then actually do something. Um, because the engine works that works like this. Uh, when the engine loads a new menu, uh, it even creates in the background of this menu a magic timer. And this timer will be very usable for scripting. It will actually count the time on, in ticks on how much time the user is in this menu. I need to wait on 100 ticks. Yeah, so basically when we wait 100 ticks, which is 5 seconds, what we need to do? We need to... Oh, we need to, in this case we'll hop in a very big menu because this is not an add event this is an add action and the actions that are available are a lot um gonna go and select go to menu and here i can actually type in the menu that they want the engine to go so in this case i want it to go to the main one just like this so um yeah Basically, we just coded the warning menu. It was that easy. So right now, uh, if I play the game, I will be able to basically, if I play the game, the engine will be able to start the, start the game for this frame, wait five seconds and switch to this one. Okay, now it's time to code the buttons of this uh, main menu to um, make them work so they can actually start a new game and you know continue so let's go to scripting um, no wait let's not go to scripting yet because I need to show you something else first um, if we go to uh, the buttons in properties you can actually find a section called ID and it's very important because when you code the button um, you need to have a reference to it so um, that the engine can actually know which button you're talking about. I'm gonna put here, because this is the new game button, I'm gonna simply call the, uh, simply give it an ID uh, of, uh, I don't know, new game. And I'm gonna go to the continue button, give it an ID of G ID um, continue. Just like that. And you're good to go. So. As you can see, I just set the ID of both buttons and I can actually use them now in the scripting tab. So I'll add now an event and I will click the event when button clicked. I'm gonna, and here as you can see, it's gonna ask for the ID. The ID in this case of the new game button is new game. So I'm gonna tell the engine, when I will click the button New Game, I want you to start a new game. And when I want, and when the button Continue is click, I want 
the engine to continue the game. And yeah, we just coded in like, I don't know, three seconds, those two buttons, it was very easy. And yeah, that's basically it. So right now, if I will run time this, you will actually see that uh, the engine will be able to go first to the warning menu as soon as the game starts, wait for 5 seconds, then switch to this main menu when we actually can click on these buttons, and one will just start a new, a brand new game, and this will actually continue the game. So like if we, I don't know, were at night 3, we can actually continue and go directly to night 3 and the engine will be able to do that so yeah that's it if you want more help I, I suggest you to join the discord server which you can find on the description or just you know now you actually be able to receive announcements on the progress of this engine receive help help suggestions and more i hope you guys like the tutorial shout out to xenon who actually wrote the script for this video and yeah, that's it. See ya.